let's see how to use a transformer for predicting time series. In the last part, we made use of LSTM. Now we're going to make use of transformers. So let's look at largely the same example. We are going to make use of the Sunspots data set that we used before. Here we load it almost in exactly the same way. This is basically just a data set that contains sunspot observations, so the number, number of sunspots, from the year 1818 up until the present. This is a government file, and I don't know, they're lazy. They don't put column headers on it. So I created some column headers here to, uh, I guess, just help the government, government along there. So now we go ahead and we're going to break this into a training and a test set. Just like before, nothing really crazy here. We're taking the years. Any sunspot activity that happens before year 2000, I'm going to use that to train. Anything that happens after year 2000, I am going to use that to validate. Now, sunspots will likely change over, over time. But good grief, solar age is, is, is gigantic. So it, do, it doesn't particularly, we're not seeking any sort of trends or any, anything going on there. We'll see that actually in the next, next part. We break these up into sequences because this, we take the number of sunspots from the beginning up until, up until where the data set ends, but we define a sequence size, which is 10. And it's a sliding window. We slowly move that across and we look at the same, and we look at 10 values and then we move it and it, they're the next 10 values and the next and the next. And usually whatever is just beyond the window, that's what we're trying to predict. We're trying to use the first 10 values to predict the 11th, say for example. This two sequences function does that. It loops up to the size of the number of observations minus the sequence size. Because obviously we can't go beyond, beyond that edge. We're going to use positional encoding for transformers. This is a little class that we have to put together just to positionally encode the data coming in. There's entire videos that take you through the complete theory of transformers and this class is application, so I'm just showing you some of the basics here so that you can see what's in the code. Basically, we are encoding the, the time and the next time according to the sine and cosine wave because they, they tend to, I mean, they, they intersect each other as, as they go forward. So this allows some basic time encoding to go in here. We're basically adding the sine and cosine to the input data as they are as they are coming in. You can see this here. We create a class for the positional encoding and you can see it's an NN model. So it's a PyTorch model itself in its own right. And it takes in the input. We have the model size and we are going to basically pass it through this. And you can see here that the sine and cosine are being added to the, the input values as they, as they pass through. So it's sort of being etched into the input as it comes in just to give some positional encoding for it. This rolls up into the actual transformer model that we're going to make use of. You can see that the positional encoding occurs at the beginning uh, before it goes into the transformer encoding layers, which are going to actually do the encoding and then finally, there's a decode. Transformers are an encoder, internal representation, and then out to a, to a decoder that is making the next prediction. So the, the encoder is basically encoding the, the sequence, the 10, the 10 time slices that had the sunspots in it. And then the decoder, that, that gets encoded into an internal state. And then that internal state is what the, the neural network has remembered of it, the transformer has remembered, that then goes to the decoder that then transforms it into what we're predicting the next value to be. There's several parameters you can pass in. The input dimensions, that's one because we have one sunspot, one, one concept, which is sunspots. If we were adding something else, like, I don't know, the position of mercury, <laughs> I doubt that affects it, but something such as that. 
then D model, this is the number, this is that size of that internal state. That obviously controls how much it can really remember. Setting it too high leads to certain inefficiencies there. You have also attention heads that are part of the attention process. Attention is all you need, attention. This is, this is, it basically also controls the processing capability. And then finally, the number of layers, the number of actual transformer layers that's being used uh, towards the end of it to remember and learn from, from what the, uh, the input is. Then as far as training the model, this all happens really relatively similar to how you train any model almost in PyTorch. We're using a variety of things here. We're using early stopping so that if nothing is improving for a bit, we'll stop. We're using a learning rate schedule so that the learning rate is decreasing gradually as training pro training progresses. And you can see the training here and it gets to the end and it early stops. We then evaluate it and get really relatively similar results to what we got with the LSTMs. Thank you for watching this video and if this was helpful, give me a, give it give it a like and also consider subscribing so that you don't miss future videos on this, this, and also consider subscribing so that you don't miss future videos on this class and other projects that I do. Thank you for watching.